Welcome in, everybody. Thank you so much for joining. This is Mikey Wine, uh, a.k.a. Gun to Morning Works, and uh, it's Thanksgiving Eve. So, you know, we got the holiday coming up, and I'm sure everybody's got plans, and that's okay. We're going to do a short show tonight because uh, I got some celebrating to do. And uh, some of my friends know why it's not just a holiday. Uh, something rather significant has uh, has happened in 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 the, in the last or few hours. And you know what? I'm just going to say we won. Uh, but anyway, the principal uh, build for this project is done. Now it's just about making a little base. Uh, for the project, I'm going to get to the uh, move the camera down to the to the workbench here, and we'll and I'll try. I, I, I save the new uh, I save the new uh, camera angle, so we can kind of show this off because it's kind of hard to see looking straight down on it. So I'm going to switch to that one right now, and I can kind of zoom in. It's just a little bit further down, and you're looking at my belly, whatever. But I'm going to zoom in just a little bit here, uh, and then I'll slide the kit over. I can show you what. Uh, oops, that's not what I wanted to do. I didn't want to move the gimbal. I wanted to zoom in. Hang on. Let me get that back. Uh, we'll go right there, and then uh, just a little bit of zoom right about there. Okay. So that way I can slide this piece over and kind of show you what's going on here. Now I have done something that I was considering doing and it actually works out really well. I have two 10 millimeter magnets and I mounted this one inside. There's quite a large cavity underneath the, uh, the belly here. And then there's another recessed area in the torso, the lower torso. So I put two magnets in there and that allows me to make this connection. It's a pretty strong connection. And you can see how much it kind of sucks it down. And then, but it also allows me to rotate the waist if I want to, which is kind of nice. Everything else is glued and fixed except for the arms. There's a little bit of flexibility in the arms. Um, but I wanted to leave a little bit of posability in the kit there. So I did that. So I'm going to tilt this back so you can kind of see the size of it here. Um, yeah, it's a beast. I took some pictures, put them up on my page and Instagram and my Facebook page showing it next to a 148 scale Valkyrie. So you can kind of get a size comparison there and it's pretty big. Um, and then of course I've got the little pilot figure here, which I plan on painting and adding to this. And I'll show you kind of how that's going to work. So what I'm going to do at the moment here is I'm going to switch down to my other camera, which is uh, looking straight down here. It's close. So switch it up. Bang, bang. Okay. Actually, you know what? I can just start with uh, my look down position here. So there we go. That's a little bit better. So here's what I've got. I got a couple of these leftover. Uh, actually, I have quite a few of these, but. I'm only going to need to. I just want to do something basic uh, for the base. Um, this is going to be the back, the front here. Uh, just a couple of these little chain base bases that I've uh, put together. These are glued together already, so they will not come apart. Another thing that I did was uh, there were some connector pieces that kind of stick out around these edges for linking more of these together. I went ahead and cut those off, sanded everything down because I'm not going to need to connect any more pieces. I just want this basic base. So this will sit kind of in this position here. It's not it's not big, doesn't need to be big, you know. You can kind of see the front there. But just enough for, for him to stand on. And then I can go ahead and uh paint and everything like that. So what I have started to do, and you can see some of these white dots here. Uh, one thing I can't, I just can't stand is 
seeing like a, a beautifully painted kit standing on top of a an action base or something like that that's not even been touched or painted or anything like that. Um, what's going on? I got uh, got people to chime in on my phone. No big deals. So what I like to do is I like to fill those holes with some plastic rod, and I've got to drill these out to one eighth inch and then this is a one eighth inch rod and then just pop a piece in glue it in cut it off and i can sand it down and and when i when it's done being painted you won't even see those holes and that's the whole point it's because i just i just I, maybe i'm too old school you know whatever it is but i like i don't want to see these giant holes because imagine if this were actual you know an actual mech or something like that and you're walking around this platform and you got these giants i mean these are these are ankle busters, man. There'd be these huge holes in the floor. I doubt that very much. So if I'm not using them, I'm going to fill them in. And then also along the back edge here, you can see like these slots uh, that are cut into. And that's for basically mounting the, if you're going to have a rear wall or something like that, you're going to have those uh, slots in there to mount those walls. Well, I'm not using those. So what I've done is I have a few strips of this. It's a plastic square it's actually more like a rectangle but it's the perfect width and it'll fit right in to those roofs so what i'm gonna do is cut some pieces glue them in fill all these spots in and then again when i paint that over you won't even see that now to finish it off because i've cut these edges off and you can see they're kind of rough you know there's you know this is where one of those tabs were uh there was another one here there was a long one across one of these other sides. That's all been trimmed off. So I've got this uh, plastic strip, and I don't know the exact width of this, but it is perfect to the height of this base. So what I'm going to do is cut some strips. I've also beveled them. I'm going to go all the way around, and that will show you here. That will completely seal off this edge so it'll be nice and clean don't any ugly edges there so that's what i'm doing i'm just working on the basics so getting it set up so then i can prime it paint it hand paint the head uh the figure what's up george how you doing man you're so old school yeah <laughs> i know we are we are you know what though i will say one thing this is this is nothing to do with old school but i just remember something i forgot to do I'm sitting here saying that this this kit is completed, but I forgot there's an actual antenna, and I'm going to bring it back here. There's an antenna, and I, I've already built it. I basically took two pieces of uh, round rod, and I drilled out the larger of the two. You can see it right here, and then I screw, you know, I glued in the the thinner piece. This is supposed to go. Let's see if I can do this without my glasses on. Right here on top. So I've got to I've got to glue that in place. So I'm gonna I've got to paint it and glue that in place. So then this will be actually done. So there's one little piece missing from it, and that's the antenna. Uh, yeah. So when you, speaking of old school, we're just talking about filling in all these pieces on the base so it doesn't look like an action base. It actually looks like it's supposed. To, I don't like seeing holes in the ground that aren't being used. If I was gonna put little greebles or you know those little uh, uh, you know, little things on the floor or something like that, yeah, then I might leave some of these holes open for that reason. But I'm not doing that. I'm going to fill them in, and that's where we're at. So let's get started. And I guess I can either zoom in on this or not. I think this is a good uh, a good camera right at the moment. If you want to see it closer, I can use the zoom and get in here. But what I'm just going to do is I'm going to go through and start drilling these holes out. And it's this drill bit is one eighth drill bit, but the it seems like the the rod is slightly larger than that. So I've kind of had to work them out a little bit, make them a little bit larger, and then finally, you know, do a test fit. And then when they're when it's, you know, it fits, then I just glue it in place. So I'm going to start by just drilling them all out and make a lot of of a mess. Now these holes do not go through all all the way through the bottom, so it's kind of nice. They only kind of go down about maybe a quarter of an inch uh, but as I'm rocking this bit around I'm just kind of rolling that that hole out make it a little bit larger and then I'll see if my my rod fits in there if it does you know I'm gonna take a little bit more 
then I'm good to go on that. I'll show you how I do that. I'm just take a little bit of extra material out. Yeah, that's going to fit nicely. So I'm going to take some glue. A little bit of glue in there. Drop this in. And give it one more shot of glue. And then I can just go ahead with my... Uh, get these flat on the table. Clip it off. Now, I'm going to have to go back and sand these, of course. This is a little bit of a lip here sticking up, and that's fine. That's better than it being recessed. And I can always go back and, and sand that smooth. Hey, what's up, Nick? And, uh, but that, like I said, that way, when this is all filled in, you won't even see any of these holes. I did the same thing when I did the, uh, the last Valkyrie project that I finished off. Um, those, those base kits were made from, a, there was a company, and it was almost like Wave, but it was a company out of, uh, I think it was North Korea. No, no, I don't know. South Korea. I don't know. Korean company. Anyway, um, they're hard to find anymore, but they're kind of a, the same kind of assembly. They're actually a better quality than this, uh, these bases here, but they kind of go together the same way. And I just um, filled in any of those holes. In fact, even on the back wall of that diorama, I filled in all the holes that weren't being used. So just basically, it, to me, it just finishes off the whole thing. You don't see these gaping holes. I, like I said before, when I first started the broadcast, there's just nothing like nothing like seeing this beautifully painted kit standing on an action base that's just not even been touched, not even painted, none of the holes filled. To me, it just looks like crap. You know, it kind of detracts from the whole aesthetic of it. I mean, you got this this thing you want. You're displaying this, this beautiful display piece, but you've got it on a base, this wonky action base with, with literally no paint, nothing filled, just a bunch of gaping open holes, and it just, to me, it just looks like shit. But that's just me. You guys do what you want. See, not too bad. Pretty simple. Takes a little bit of time, a lot of drilling, but... You know, I've cut a few of these pieces already that go, go around the outside. This is actually beveled on both sides, so this will fit. I'm going to chamfer the corners and make a nice uh, a nice uh, border around this, and it will look, will look clean, nice and clean when I'm finished. How's everybody getting ready for the holiday? I mean, what are you guys doing? For me, this year, we've decided, kind of like last year, we're just not cooking. You know, we had the kids come over. We brought uh, my son's uh, in-law or uh, fiance's parents. They came over and they hang out. And uh, we did all the hosting and cleaning and everything else. I just got to say, you know what? This year we're not doing it. So we're going to go to an Irish pub that's open downtown. And we're going to hang out and uh, have a few drinks and just chill out. Rather than worrying about doing all the, you know, big family cooking and everything like that, you know, somebody can invite me to their house this time. I don't have to be the host anymore. All right, so just get this to fit in there and I give a little bit of extra glue just to make sure that's going to cure a nice, nice, good, tight seal around it. The trick is to get these. Clippers right close to the edge, so and nice and flat. So when you trim it off, it's yeah, there's very little sanding that needs anything need done there. Irish pub, nice, yeah. The place we're going to is called Patty Coins, and um, they have a they make a really good black and tan. I'm going to see if they can do a perfect Irish for me. If you don't know what a black and tan is, it's basically you take a bass ale. Pour that in a nice tall pilsner or, or even like a pint glass, about halfway full, and then you float a Guinness on top of that. So you got these two beautiful layers of of uh, different beer. And the reason they don't mix is because uh, normal beer is carbonated, and those bubbles go up. Guinness is nitrogen charged, and those bubbles actually go down. 
So when those two two uh, types converge, they can't mix. They push against each other. So you have these two layers, and then you get all those flavors as you drink it. A perfect Irish is basically the same thing, only they're using, uh, instead of Bass, they're using Smittix, which is an Irish ale. Smittix and Guinness. So it's that's where the, the perfect Irish comes in because it's all Irish beers. Very, very good. That's what I'm looking forward to. So we do have uh, something to celebrate uh, this week as well. I just found out that this little legal matter that I've had to deal with for the past nine months has now been resolved and we are done. That's what I have to be thankful for. What's up, David? How you doing, bud? Forgive me, I can't remember the last time I saw you on here, actually. I know it hasn't been that long, but uh, good to see you nonetheless. Thanks for, co for coming in. I appreciate each and every one of you every week. Uh, right now, we're just filling in holes on this base to get it prepped for, for primer. What I'm doing, you see me test fitting that. I'm just, I've got to kind of round out these holes and make it a little bit larger than the drill bit. I didn't have anything that was a perfect fit for the for the rod I'm using. So I test, test it out. If it's a little bit tight, I'll go back over with the drill bit. Give it a little bit more. Brewmeister Mike. <laughs> well, my last name is Wine, so. You know, there's got to be some kind of alcohol involved, right? And uh, I do have a partnership with a winery now, so it's been a fair bit. Kids hog up all the time. Oh gosh, I understand that, but you know what? I'm uh, all my kids are are grown up and moved out. My youngest is 25. Uh, my oldest is 33, 33 this year, but uh, my step, as far as my stepkids, because uh, I, when I met my wife, uh, she had two previous, and uh, our oldest in that respect is uh, in our 40s now. But she lives in another state. So we don't see her quite as often as we do everybody else. I know George said he likes a, a good glass of wine every now and then. Well, I'm going to have to send you a, a nice bottle. Something from... Uh, Something from the winery that I uh, am partners in. Something good. Which is actually what I'm uh, enjoying tonight. Actually, I've got a little bit here. Mm-hmm. Good stuff. So I got a friend coming over um, in a bit. And... Uh, so we're probably going to make this a short show, probably about an hour instead of an hour and a half. Um, after all, it is a holiday after all, or holiday eve. And, uh, I'm sure everybody's got stuff to do and, and get ready for. Uh, but again, I do appreciate each and every one of you guys coming out tonight and joining me on this Thanksgiving Eve. Mine are eight and three. <laughs> Those are the good ears. I don't know. Eight, three, yeah. Three is about, you're, you're through the twos. You got the terrible twos out of the way. But, uh, yeah, that's all right. Just wait till they start. What did they tell you they hate you for the first time? 
<laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm not sure if mine ever did that. Don't think I ever pissed him off enough to say that. But twos are fun. Youngest is a nightmare. <laughs> like I said, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it's okay. It's all good. I'm not sure uh, who's easier, boys or girls. I've got both. Um, my first was a boy years ago. Years and years ago, when I was 19, I had him. And uh, that's another long story for another long episode. But, uh, yeah. Now he's uh, he's in the, his 30s now. He's 30, just turned 34. Yeah, 34 in September. And... Uh, veteran in the army served in afghanistan for two years so yeah talk about talk about one of our heroes he's he's the guy good evening everyone happy thanksgiving how you doing julius good to see you thanks for chiming in thanks for popping in it's good to see all you guys i wasn't sure what the uh turnout would be tonight because again a lot of people are some people are traveling maybe locally even but you're still, you know, you're in the car, you're going to visit family, or you're getting ready for an event. You really don't have the time to sit here and watch this old guy drill holes all night. But, uh, you know, whatever. It is what it is. I'm, uh, I'm glad you're here. I am saying that right, am I not? It's Julius, or is it, or is it, do you pronounce it? Julius, is it? I mean, I'm, I'm asking because I'm I'm stupid. <laughs> I just want to make sure I'm saying your name right. So say say one for Julius, two for Julius. <laughs> you tell me and uh, make sure I'm doing it right. Maybe I'm completely wrong. Maybe it's maybe there's a silent S in there somewhere. I don't know. Get sideways. Oh, how you doing, man? Are you is this your first time in? How's it going? Get sideways. I don't think I've seen you before. Thanks for coming in. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Happy Thanksgiving or early Thanksgiving Eve. Get sideways. All right. Or is it somebody we know under a new profile name? That's not uncommon that's happened before so it's julius all right good i'm glad i'm doing it right <laughs> thanks for clarifying that i appreciate it like the orange all right we're good i like a good orange julius I, I i grew up near a mall when i was a kid there was an orange julius in the mall I mean, that was back when it was like the real thing i don't even know if those exist anymore but we had those, yeah. yeah. That was back when we had hot dog on a stick, too. Those good old days. The younger kids are going, hot dog on a stick, what's that? George is like, oh, yeah, I remember that. He knows. He probably, he's probably seen a hot dog on a stick or a... Whoa, that was a big drop of blue. Did not mean to do that, Trying to get a little extra and ended up just putting a big old drop on there. But that's all right. Soaked it up before it could do any damage. I'm working kind of fast here, but this process doesn't take much. I'll be reorganizing my workbench while listening. Nice. Hey, what's up, John? Big John's in the house. John Moore. Good to see you too. Everybody in on this. Thanksgiving Eve. Um, speaking of reorganizing your workbench, interesting you brought that up. Uh, I know I may have mentioned it before that I'm going to be redoing the floor in here. Right now, my my uh, hobby room is just it's it's, it's a bedroom. It's that way. I'll, I'll get one to that in a second. Let me finish reading what's going on. Welcome, come join every Wednesday. 
Oh, I think I had all the same problems with quality of my Tomahawk parts. You did. So you built this as two. You built this kit as well. Interesting. Um, good to hear that. I mean, good, good and bad, but good to hear that. Uh, to see that I wasn't, uh, I guess, the only one going through it. Now, did you buy the uh, the Glauge as well? Because I did. Last week I did a reveal on that, and I actually unboxed it and showed some of the early flaws I've seen on it. It's not nearly as bad as this one was in the beginning, but there are some issues, um, which I guess is to be expected with any kind of a garage kit. But I'm just curious if you bought the Glauge as well. Um, but anyway, getting back to the workbench, um, I'm going to be redoing the floors. I've already bought the flooring. It's going to be uh, a hybrid laminate flooring that is uh, basically has its own, uh, no, only the tomahawk. Okay. I'm not going to go to the tomahawk. I mean, I'm not going to go to the clouds immediately after this one. I am going to build something else in between. But... I may take a break only to to redo the floor in here. And it's going to be interesting because I'm not going to be able to clear the entire room. I'm going to have to do like one half at a time and kind of move things over back and forth. That that way I don't have to completely gut the room uh, to do it. So I've got a friend that's going to help me, like the angel, angels, if he's in the room. I don't know if he's watching or not. He's coming to my house tonight, but... Uh, he was going to help me do it, and we've been discussing uh, ways to kind of tackle this project without uh, having to move everything into a hallway or or anything like that. Um, so there may be a break in time where I'm not working on any specific project. If I do any videos at all, it might just be like uh, Tim Harkin, you know, Child Mecca might be showing you this this uh, this new. <laughs> This new workbench, or whatever, he, what do they call it? This new, um, I can't remember what he called it. I'm having a mind blank right now. This, this new, uh, what the hell did he call it? Come on, guys, help me out here. I'm dying. This, this new something. But anyway, uh, I may end up doing a video or two like that. We're showing the progress of the, of the floor now. It hopefully will not take long to do. It may only take a week or two or even a weekend. Um, think of doing laminate floors on concrete floor in my basement. Oh, nice. Uh, yeah, this is uh, carpeted, but I imagine it's, you know, judging by the way the houses are built here in Washington, I'm pretty sure uh, it's going to be that wafer board shit underneath. Uh, Breaks are unacceptable, <laughs> unacceptable, and don't be like Tim. Has it? That is true. No, Tr George, I will not do that. I won't. I will tell you right now. I will not let everybody down and just disappear off the place. Basically. Now, that being said, I'm sure Tim is very, very busy, and I and I always he's been busy with work, and that's probably what's taken him away from all all of us. And we all enjoyed his his presence, and when we used to do uh, the. Uh, mechanism shows and everything like that i miss those very much but uh hopefully he will return soon um but you know that again this is a hobby real life comes first and sometimes it can monopolize our time you almost cried <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm happy. I'm happy. Uh, I'm glad you're not going to have to have a complete meltdown tonight, George. I, I appreciate that. You can't be the only old guy on camera every day, every week, or whatever. So, got four more holes here. We're working. We're steadily cruising along here with these. I'm just going to go through and finish these last four before because I keep drilling one and then gluing it, drilling one, gluing it. I'm just going to fit all four of these and get ready and then I can just do four quick snaps uh, but anyway I, I have to do this eventually I have the flooring already it's ready to go I just I just gotta buck up and do the project it's it's one of those things I wanted to finish this first though I wasn't gonna stop in the middle of something like the tomahawk here and uh, 
and then have to come back to that somewhere in the near future. Uh, so I am going to wait until I'm done with this. Um, then when I'm finished with it, uh, I'll figure out what I'm going to going to build in the time being. I may end up taking that uh, K2SO back out of the box that I kind of did in the middle of this. At one point, I did one weekend, which or one week show was just like a snap build of the K2 because I was doing that. Uh, I was in the middle of paint or something like that. I couldn't. Uh, is, it, is it Costco laminate flooring? No, it is not Costco laminate flooring. I bought it from lum, uh, Lumber Liquidators uh, in uh, Shoreline. They have a flooring show there, and it was it was on sale. They have a flooring uh, store, I should say. Uh, but it's, Lumber Liquidators is the uh, the owner of the store. And I got a pretty good deal on it, but I bought this uh, floor. It's it's a hybrid, so it has a built-in uh, padding that's built into the laminate flooring itself. So I don't have to put anything down first. It's just basic. You, you, you clear the surface off, and then you install the flooring. It's got everything built into one, and it's only about seven millimeters thick, I think. I think it was like seven or something like that. It's not too terribly thick. Um, so I shouldn't have to, uh, to change anything with the baseboards. Those should be fine where they're at. I'm not going to have to strip that stuff off or anything like that. I can just pull the carpet up. Are you plugging the holes in the in that base? Yes, I am plugging the holes in the base. You can see all these holes right here, these white hole, these white dots, those are already plugged. I don't like leaving these blank holes just sitting there in a base that, you know, like I was saying earlier in the show, it's like nothing bothers me more than seeing this beautifully painted uh, kit on a display stand or in a contest with a base that has just been untouched. To me, it's all about presentation and that, is what completes the presentation is if, if, if you have it on a base. And, you know, it's just, like I said, I was talking, George and I were joking about this earlier. Maybe I'm too old school, and I like to have, you know, a completed base. And to me, that means filling the holes and, and gaps anywhere around it. And, You know, anything that's not used, and that way it looks like one cohesive piece. Uh, uh, some people just don't do that. To me, uh, it's unacceptable. But that's just me. So I take the time like this and go through and fill the holes. Costco flooring I'm looking at is the this, this snap fit style. Yeah, mine is as well. It's, it's, it's a... I can't remember. It's not tongue and groove, but it's that kind of thing. It, it is made to snap in place. Uh, and I can't remember, for right now, I can't remember the name of it. But uh, if you want to get it at Costco, I'm sure that's it. You're going to get a great price there, too. But Lumber Liquidators, is a, they have sales all the time as well. I would check into them just to see. There is a showroom uh, in Shoreline. Lumber Liquidators has uh, also, you know, stores for regular lumber as well. But the one in uh, Shoreline is just for flooring. Use your own mic, but I agree with you on the bases. Yeah, I. Yeah, you're right. Each your own. Each your own. I'm not saying that the, my way or the highway. Don't get me wrong. It's just it's personal preference. But to me. You know, to if you're putting something on the base, it's what completes the whole the whole thing. You know, and to have have the base, it just seems to me unfinished with the holes that are you know if they're not being used. So we got two other things to do on this. Um, one, I've got to fill all of these slots along the back edges here, and that's where I've got this. Uh, you know, these pieces of rectangular plastic strip. And they are the exact same width, so I'm going to have to do some measuring and cutting. Uh, 
That's what the chopper's here for. I have the chopper here. We're going to do some chopping. We're going to chop a little bit of plastic for you guys tonight. We're going to show you how this works. Now, I know George has been having trouble with his chopper. It doesn't quite chop in a straight line. It's a little bit off for him. He's going to have to figure it out. But for now, I'm going to do some chopping for you and show you how mine works. I'll do some measuring. We'll be fine. There's your Arnold Minute. My daughter and I were talking about what models impress us most. This, it's ones that tell stories. Yes, absolutely. And that's about, you know, the base. You know, the base is part of the story, right? It's not about just putting it on the table. A kit's on the table on the, by themselves is, is perfectly fine. Again, don't get me wrong. But if you're going to put it on a base, at least finish the base. That's my point, you know. I have no problem with somebody uh, displaying a kit any which way they want. It's just for me, my my personal preference is if I'm going to put it on a base like this, whether it be something as simple as just two chain you know base blocks like this, or something a little more elaborate like the Valkyrie I did with a back wall and lighting. It's all about telling the story, and that's what finishes it off for me. So I'm just going to do some measurements here. I'm going to mark this and cut this on the chopper. Okay, I may need to take a little bit off. Whoops. Well, I just went. Oh, I know what I did wrong. <laughs> I was measuring across this entire thing. I'm like, why is this so terribly wrong? Because it actually stops here. So I've got to recut this. As not be best judges, who's hard to models low Bandai stance. Yeah, the Bandai, that's what I was talking about in particular, just like those action bases. They are very wonky, and um, you're right. If you've got this big, heavy kit on there, especially even like like when I finish uh, the high new heavy weapons, right? That was one of the biggest kits I've done in a while, and the high new is heavy enough as it is and the base it comes with is is, is kind of decorative it's got that uh, that symbol you know it's kind of built into the base but then you add all that extra armor on there and it was just ridiculously heavy and it even it just couldn't handle the weight and then you put it on a on an action base like that and i had to build something for it now i will say that the base that i built the plaster actually cracked and broke on me when I went to box it back up after the last IPS uh, spring show here in April. So I'm going to do something different. I the the base was I was trying to throw something together that was a you know a completed base but something that was nice looking. I was trying to simulate a kind of like an asteroid and it just it it was okay but it just didn't work out. So I think I'm going to redo it. If I if I do redo anything, I'm going to redo it with uh, uh, make it look more like a rather than an asteroid. I'm going to make it look like a something like this a base a base that looks either like steel or something like that. Too fragile and looks cheap. Exactly. That's exactly what I'm talking about. The action bases just don't they just don't do it for me. I cut that piece too. Buckle. All right. So let's try this one. We'll do this again. Um, so yeah, but the, again, like George said, to each your own. You know, everybody can do. And some people, you know, maybe they're just not capable. You know, so you you, you do what you can. You display it the best way you can. And sometimes that means using an action base, but 
for me, I tend to try to make my stuff a little more decorative, a little more finished. And so that's why I like, there we go. That looks good. Okay. So I got a strip here. You can see that right in there that I'm going to press down just to get it level with surface I don't want to go too deep and then I can go ahead and glue that in place some sort of a hanger might be cool but you've made a few of those already yeah I did I was considering a hanger type um, base for this something but it's so much bigger than the Valkyrie it just stands so so tall and I really don't have a ton of this material left to do I would have to scratch build a lot of it um, so I thought, you know, rather than making an elaborate base, I'm still going to have the pilot figure, uh, something simple that, that doesn't detract from the star of the show, which is the kit. So that's why I'm, I'm, I'm going this, uh, smaller, a little bit simpler, uh, design. As I do judge, uh, okay. Uh, two for some of the hang. Yeah. Just talking about the high note. <laughs> yeah, it's a it's a massive kit. I love the high new. I like the new. I mean the new Verka is nice. The high new was nice too. I've done both kits. Um I just uh when I bought the uh, high new I bought the heavy weapon system and that was before you could get it in a single package. I actually bought them separate. Uh, now they're actually producing a heavy weapons high new that's all in one box. A really huge box, but it's uh, it's available that way if you so choose. So let's see. I, may, I think this will work. I may have to insert a little slice just on the end here because I cut this just a tad too short. I was trying to trim it down and it took a little bit more off, but rather either that or I can just cut another piece and use this for some of these shorter pieces because I still have to enter. If you look at this piece is in here, but I still got these little short pieces. So I may just use that for that. And we'll figure that out. So I think for now, I'm going to take this other piece and I'll just cut a new one. And hopefully I don't uh, cut this one too fucking short. So it's quarter to seven right now. East Coast time. I'm going to try to wrap this up around seven. Like I said, I'm going to make a little bit shorter program tonight. Because I got some celebrating to do myself. And I'm sure all of you as well. There we go. Let's see where how we're at. See if I cut it too short. Nope. Good. It's a little too long, but that's okay. I can take some off. That is the whole point. Just a tiny sliver here. There we go. That should be enough. Almost had it. Oh, nice and tight. Perfect. Actually, a little bit too much. I got to take it back out. It's it's a little bit tight, so it's binding. It's causing it to bend. So I'm just gonna, rather than cut it, I'm just gonna shave a little bit off with a sanding stick. That should make it. There we go. That's perfect. What it was doing was because it was it had pressure on either side, so it was causing it to kind of bend on me. And that's not what I want. I want it to be flat across this. Uh, the surface here so popping this in and I will go back and sand this as well make sure everything's level what thickness is the paw that you're using oh you're talking about this uh, the strip it's more of a rectangle um, Let's see here. I've got my, you know what, where is it? There it is. I've got my caliper here. I can measure it for you. Because I'm, I'm not, it's not square, so it, it's fitting in on the, 
the narrower side. So this is, uh, I think, one, a little over a millimeter thick. And then the other side, oh gosh, I actually got, let me zero this out. I thought I didn't have a charged battery in here. Yeah, it's kind of getting weak on me though. It was working for a second there. Oh, there it goes. Now, this thing's just, I have to do it by, I have to eyeball it because the digital part is just being stupid. I think the battery's too weak. So yeah, a millimeter thick, and then it's about, uh, it's about a one by two. Actually, let me see what the package says. I've got these long ass strips here. 1.5 by 2. So there you go. 0 0.060 inch by 0 080 inch if you're doing the using the standard American BS. Otherwise, it's 1.5 by 2 millimeter for all you metric. SOBs there. It's fine. I, I deal with metric all day long, working on Japanese cars. So all we use. I don't use that standard shit. So oh, cool. Thank you, sir. You are very, very welcome. <sighs> okay. Well, did anybody does anybody need to see anything else? I and I, I know I showed the kit pretty quick. Um but some people joined in a little bit later than that. What the hell's going on with stream there? Why are you showing? Oh, my, my mouse was in the way. I had something popping up on the screen. I couldn't figure out why. Is there anything in particular you want to see on the, the tomahawk? Let me know. I can take a break from this and uh, show that if necessary. I've only got about uh, 10 minutes left, a little, a little more than 10. And then we'll uh, call this one. So I've got a few more pieces here that I can fit into some of these other, other areas. Oh, this is a little bit narrower. Huh. Oh, no. I did not anticipate that at all. Well, that's, that's a tight fit there, but it fits. These slots, eh, it'll fit. It's just a lot tighter. This strip on the back, I guess, is a little is slightly wider. It fits in a lot easier. Are these on the, along the corners? Are a little bit uh, tighter, but I think with some glue, it'll it'll just kind of press right in there. As soon as I melt a little bit of it, it'll just press right in. So I'm definitely not worried about that. So, but I am going to cut one of these. Let's see here, these shorter pieces. This has to be a little more precise than the other stuff. Is the tomahawk together yet? Yes, it is. So you have not seen it then. Well, then I will take a break here. As soon as I'm done cutting this piece, um, I will show you where we're at. I'm going to trim. I will say, um, get sideways, I'm talking to you now. If you do want to see complete build picks, go to my Facebook page, Gundamonium Works, and you will see everything you need to see as far as the build progress there. It's all there. Either that or you can see it on Instagram. There's a few on Instagram. Instagram kind of limits the amount of photos you can... Uh, Upload at one time, so most of the stuff you see is going to be on Facebook. Um, let me get this piece cut and fitted, and then we will. I'll switch over to that. Uh, I just need my tweezers. Where are they? So I'm trying to make sure these fit nice and snug. I don't have any gaps. So this is going to be perfect. If I just got to sand off a little bit here. Oh, hell yeah. Still check it out. Yeah, I'll show you here in a sec. Just give me one sec here. I just want to get this one piece fitted, and then we'll we'll wrap it up with a, a show and tell of the actual kit. 
Okay, so that's going to fit nice and snug if I can just get it to drop in. There we go. Okay, can you guys hear that? That's how tight that is. Like, really tight. Oh, so that's nice. I don't even think I need any glue. Right? I actually used the back of my, uh, <laughs> my Zacto there to... Because this is a this is a, a nice uh, handle my brother bought me years ago, and I just used the pack of this to press it down in there. But anyway, so that's what that's what I'm going for is to fill all those in. So once I get this thing completely filled, and, and once we shoot it with some primer, we'll, we can see where it's at and uh, go from there. So with that, I'm put this aside, get some room here, and I'll move this aside. I'm bring the tomahawk over. The tomahawk's actually sitting right in front of me. You just can't see it. So, oh boy, here we go. Now I'm going to switch cameras here. I'm going to go back to the one that's kind of down. Here we go. So you get a little bit better angle. Now this is. I still have to paint this. I just I forgot that I had to put an antenna on here. So I I scratch built an antenna. I'm going to uh, paint that and, and glue that in place. But So here you go. It's about 11 inches to the top of the missile pod here. From the bottom of the feet, it's almost uh, 11 inches. So massive, massive kit. I left the elbows and the shoulders and the, yeah, all, all loop. Whoa, that's my magnet. See, that's why I got this magnet on here. Pop this on. So I left these uh, these loose, so there's a little bit of posability there. Uh, you can also turn the torso. That's what the magnet was for, so I can rotate the torso, and uh, uh, if I wanted to pose that, but I'm probably not going to. It's most likely going to stay stable. Also, the magnet I installed, so I can also uh, transport this a lot easier than one big giant piece. I can just take it apart like this. Just, oh, that's a strong magnet. So pop it off. There's one. And each side of the base, you can see that, and it's got a nice, nice firm grip there. Ten millimeter neodymium magnet, so very strong. Anyway, yeah, here we go. Oh my fucking god! <laughs> well, thank you, sir. I really appreciate your your positive feedback. I'm thinking of putting uh, putting magnets, bone joints in the hips. Uh, you could. You could do that too. Uh, I ended up gluing everything in place, and I'll tell you how I did it. I started with, I kind of tried to position the lower torso. Let me just take this off so I can show you what I'm talking about. So I take this off. When I first put this all together, I glued, I took the feet off, and I, I kind of looked the way, you know, these are pretty well flat. If you look at like the vent here and the top of the leg, there's not much difference in the geometry there. there there's, the gap is about the same. Thank you, sir. Is about the same. Uh, thanks, David. On the side. So if you see, like the the gap here is straight across. There's no angle front to back. So once I figured out that I wanted these, you know, I could get these at the right angle. They're still tapered out slightly. You know, they're not straight up and down. You can see the gap here is 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 larger than the gap here. Um, once I figured that out and I, I stuck them on there and glued them in place and I kind of put the feet on, I, I didn't have the feet glued, but I did stick them on there and I just held them down tight and glued everything in place. Then I knew that all, all I had to do was pop the feet on in any time and they would, and all I had to worry about was the swivel front to back because what I wanted to do, and I actually took a little bullet level, was I put a level on here to make sure the hips were straight and it was straight up and down. So when I put the torso on, it wasn't looking like it was leaning too far back. It wasn't leaning forward, and 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 so and so on. So that's what I ended up uh, doing. So the legs are all glued together as one piece. The torso is what it is. The shoulders are still, like I said, those move around. Um, I wish we'd get the get this in one thirty five. Nigel, you're crazy. You want this in 135? This is 148. It's big. Holy crap. Uh, if you find it, if you ever do it, if you print it yourself, I would love to see that. But, man, that's going to be massive. 
I'm just wishing that Hasegawa would would get off their ass and make a 148 Batteroid. That's what I want. I want to put a battery next to this in 148, but so far they only make 172. But I will say that I did buy the Max and Miria. I got the 172s coming. They're on my pre-order from uh, Hobby Link Japan in December, December release. We're going to get uh, both of them. So you can see that magnet. It's a single magnet on either side, but it's a strong fit. I mean, it, it pulls that sucker down tight. And then, uh, yeah. So there you go. And then let's see here. I'm going to even do one better here. Let me go to, let's see, is it my, zoom in. Now you guys can see the cockpit. So I got the screens there in front. And then the, the pilot seat with the blue or the seat belts and everything. All there. I know it would be large, but I want to see someone produce a 148 bow. Yeah, yeah, that would be awesome too. I mean, did you see? You guys got to go back, go back on my YouTube and look at last week's uh, uh, broadcast because I I uh, showed the the newest addition to this to uh, my collection, and that's the 172. Commander Pod Glauge that came from uh, Moscato as well. And it it dwarfs the 1100 Bandai kit massively. It's crazy how big that actually is. It is absolutely fucking crazy. I mean, uh, I could I could go and and get the box again and, and show a little bit if you guys want to see that. But uh, last week, anyway, go, just go check out go check out last week's podcast. Because on there I, I put some I put the uh, the Bandai kit down on the table, and then I used the. Uh, I showed some parts from the 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 resin kit from Moscato, and uh, it's, did some size comparisons there. And it's it's massive. It's going to dwarf that thing, but it's not uh, not without its flaws. It has a few flaws already. But anyway, uh, da, 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 da. Nigel says I am working on the Game Body 3D models. To bring it up to 135. Nice. Nice. I have the files for Warhammer Marauder. Oh, well, the Marauder is is very close to, um, uh, if I'm not mistaken, the Marauder is kind of like a Glauge uh, uh, version. It's a version of the of the Macross Glauge. Uh, the Mad Cat is, well, well, the Mad Cat's more like, I think, more like the uh, Tomahawk, I think, something like that. I'm just going off of memory. I don't, I don't know a lot of Warhammer stuff, but you know, whatever it is what it is. So uh, we're getting close to the end here. <clears throat> Again, happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Thank you so much for coming out tonight. Um, appreciate everybody who joined in, who has been talking in the chat. You guys are awesome. Every week you guys uh, make this fun project. And, yeah, so have a great Irish Thanksgiving. <laughs> Thanks, George. I will. Um, I don't know what we're going to eat. We might eat some, you know, the funny thing is you say, oh, corned beef and hash or something like that, or corned beef and or cabbage or whatever. That's that's actually American. It's not Irish. But, you know, yeah, we don't know. Anyway, have a great holiday, everybody. Yes, you too. Uh, get sideways. You too. Everybody have a great holiday tomorrow. Um, say hello to your family. Hug your parents. Let them know you love them. And, uh, yeah, my mother's is smiling down on me tonight because uh, uh, of our victory. We we won, so it's all good. Anyway, again, thanks again. We'll talk to you soon. See you next week, and uh, maybe we'll be we'll hopefully be further along. Maybe we sound some primer, maybe some paint. We'll have this base uh, uh, almost done, and then we'll uh, we'll head over. We'll start working on the figure, the the pilot figure, and get him all done. So cool. Anyway, later, everybody. Talk to you soon.